In this video, I'm going to talk about my evolving understanding of a literature note. A uh, literature note is one of the four types of notes in the Smart Notes methodology or the Zettelkasten method of note taking. So you, you start with a fleeting note, then there's literature note, a permanent note, and you have project notes. Now, it's, it's very confusing when you first begin because you think that there's this natural trans transition from fleeting to literature to permanent to project um, that has to be followed in order. And then also another problem that you will experience when you start to take smart notes is you try to take notes on everything because you'll, you'll discover that you don't take very good notes and to circumvent that or to try to negate that in, in some way or to compensate, that's the right word, compensate, you'll start to jot down everything and you treat note taking like transcription, uh, which has definitely been the case for me. Um, but let's start with talking about why, what's the purpose of a literature, literature note? Why do you take them? Uh, and really the, per, the purpose of it is to, at least my understanding has been to create an index of ideas. So when you're reading some kind of, um, and literature note, note doesn't just pertain to like lectures and books, it, any kind of long form content in my mind. Um, and it can be shorter forms too, but I found the most useful in long form content. So whether that's an hour video or a 300 page book or a 10 page article, something that has some kind of, um, that's going to have more than a few ideas that you could capture in a fleeting note or something like that, or just jot down quickly in process. So you capture them to, you use literature notes to capture relevant information from a piece of content uh, that allows you to remember the most interesting things. Now, what's difficult when you start to take literature notes is, again, you go, you default to just um, kind of dictating or using dictation to try to capture every single idea that comes across your desk. And one of the, one of the beauties of taking smart notes is it shows you that you can't do that. Like you can just infinitely bookmark things. And there's no pain there. But when you start to use smart notes and you start to amass fleeting notes and amass literature notes, you eventually are challenged to process them into permanent notes. And if you've overloaded yourself, that's going to be very apparent. And I'm going to walk you through um, right now kind of what that looked like for me. So I'm going to open up my previous vault because I've had several iterations. So that's another thing. If you have had multiple ten attempts at an Obsidian vault, you're not alone. You're probably going to have three or four if not more, before you find kind of a workflow that's really well, works really well for you. So here's uh, my old Obsidian Vault that has been collecting dust for the last several months. Um, I started, you know, putting in a lot of metadata because I thought that was super cool and important. Um, and then I would start to pull in these highlights. And so what I did was, you know, I got all fancy and I bought Readwise and I had, this is a physical book, Home Education is a physical book that I have that's like 400 pages or something like that, maybe 300. Um, but what I did was I highlighted. So I highlighted, it's super easy, you know, massive blocks of stuff. And then I took pictures of every single page and that used OCR scanning from my phone to put it in a Readwise. And then I just, you know, downloaded that markdown file and put it in here. And so here's my literature notes, right? I've got everything, everything that I thought was awesome from that book in here. Now, the problem with this approach is it's super overwhelming. There's too much information over here. And what I would try to do is I would try to sort, you know, like, oh, this little piece of code and or this little snippet of text and this little quote that kind of go together and they remind me of this idea. But it was just a tremendous amount of work. And I would, pro I would give up after one or two permanent notes. And you can see that here where I have those notes linked. And if you scroll through this, like you can see, I tried to use the bullets to kind of uh, capture similar ideas and to group them. Uh, but there's just way too much text in here and it took way too much effort to be able to abstract out anything of value from these, these literature notes. And what I found was, is I, I was actually creating permanent notes in my literature notes. And that's a very, very common mistake that you'll make when you first begin is because you don't have a firm understanding of each type of note, you'll start to mix the tactics of one note to another one. And so these long form, uh, this, these long form phrases and writing are actually, I was writing permanent notes without knowing that I should cut them over and into an, an atomic idea and a different note. And they're all here. And so I would 
take all this time and I would write these literature notes. I'd put them here and then I get to the stage of permanent notes and I'm like, I really can't rewrite this any better. I'm exhausted from being able to do this or from this particular activity and I, I don't even want to use, I don't even want to convert them to permanent notes. Uh, and so I took the last like month or so to just like really think about like what is the purpose of a of a literature note and what it, what benefits would it bring and what does it what does it do? Um, and so if you take a look at a more recent one, so if you look at I just read an article called "Ego Depletion Is the Active Self a Limited Resource?" and I embedded. Let me just show you the preview or the code so you can see. I copied the PDF that I downloaded online. I put it in my reference folder. And then I just did this nice little embed icon here so you can see in the preview the, the PowerPoint or the PDF. Um, but if you look at my notes, this is what I've begun to do. So instead of writing out, you know, like full sentences or copying or highlighting um, because it just eventually overwhelms you and then you have a sunk cost because you highlighted it. You think you need to turn every single highlight into a permanent note and that's just not going to happen. So what I do instead now is I pick up on key phrases or sometimes a lot of times it's like my own thinking. So the second one persistence depends on knowing effort leads to success. That is me reflecting on what I just read and, and writing a short sentence. And then I just put the page number and so now you can kind of visually see what I mean by the literature note is an index of ideas. I do this a very similar thing for video courses, and I prefer to read physical books. So I don't know how well this will show up, but I use index cards. And I just, I do the same thing. I put a keyword down and then I have the page number next to it. Um, this is a literature note from a book I'm reading, The Paradox of Choice. Which is, which is an excellent read. Um, so now what I do from here is I, I shorten my knowledge cycle. So the knowledge cycle starts with you have to research what you're going to read and then it goes into you actually have to do the reading and then you do the note taking. And the note taking for me is the permanent note. So like above all else, what's important is the permanent note. And so what I've tried to do is reduce as much friction as possible to getting to that point. And how I do that is, is I don't want to interrupt and destroy my reading. I'm not a very fast reader. Um, and just highlighting everything wasn't useful. So instead now, when I go to do my note taking, I take my literature note, I put it on my desk or I open Obsidian and I start to look at these keywords and I start to identify patterns or maybe something's interesting. Like the solution of control is super interesting to me. Um, how that can negate ego depletion with an illusion of control over our environment or circumstances. And so what I would do is I'd maybe start a new note, a blank note, and I would turn, I would go back to page uh, 1253 inside this PDF and I would reread and, and scan to find that keyword. Um, and that really helps me to re-immerse myself in that particular part of the literature to get reacquainted and to familiarize myself instead of just reading um, very, the, just reading excerpts of highlights because then you kind of lose the context. And then I take the permanent note and I'm done. So I've reduced the cycle there. Now what this looks like for a video course, so I'm also taking or watching a video course called Learn How to Code, um, Google's Go, uh, Google's Go, GoLang programming language. Um, and I do, this is a little bit messier um, just because I didn't, I don't have this physical note and I'm still getting my process down for this. But what I typically do is I put links, so link to the course, um, and then GitHub repos for it are in there. Again, I've, I haven't found any value in the metadata yet, so I'm not adding it in, in the top. And then I have my notes. So this is all my notes are collapsible under a heading. Um, so here is some kind of, uh, you know, literature notes that I took that were really interesting. The beginning of the course Go was developed by geniuses was a phrase that the uh, author of the course kept repeating. And then what I do is I create a heading for every single um, module inside the inside the course. And then I put notes in there. And I've noticed that I will do the same thing to myself if I watch, say I binge like an hour of the video, and then I go to try to take permanent notes for my literature note. There's just too much information. And it, you know, like I'll never get through. I rarely get through what I've written in literature 
um, to a permanent note before I'm kind of done taking notes. And so I found that I needed to short, shorten my knowledge cycle to about 30 minutes of watching, 30 minutes of processing literature notes into permanent notes, and then go back to watching again. And that keeps me fresh and optimal as far as like watching duration. So I'm not watching it for the sake of watching it to get through, even though there's that nice progress bar. Um, I know that that is a waste if I don't don't actually consume and digest the information. So again, I create, uh, I use headings to kind of space out the different sections of the video course. And here was a good one on package management. Um, and I don't find it really useful to like link the permanent notes in here. Instead, if we open up um, the Golang permanent note, we can see that there's this cheat sheet in here. And then that's basically how I create the permanent notes. Um, and then package, here's another good one. Oh, here's what I was saying. And then I put references here. So the GoPro programming language specifications, um, they had a really good explanation of, of Go packages. And so I linked that as a source. So I didn't even link it to the source information, the video course that I had. Um, because I found a better reference, text-based reference elsewhere. But that's aside the point. Um, so anyway, but the main point here is just to capture what's interesting from the content. It doesn't need to be a formal lecture again or a book. Um, it can strictly just be any kind of long-form content. Now, where this might not make sense is if it's a tweet or if it's a tweet storm or if it's kind of like a, an 800-word article. Um, it might just make sense to skip literature notes and create a permanent note from that or whatever was interesting in there to create a fleeting note. Maybe it's further research or something or a project idea that you have and that would stay as a fleeting note that might you know, turn into a project note or a literature note later on. Like say the fleeting note was a reference to a book that you learned um, and then you go and pick up that book and you start reading it. That's when a literature note would um, become useful again. Um, so again, uh, that, that's pretty much how I take literature notes. I use it as an index of ideas, so that way I can I quickly identify what's relevant to me in there. I think the final point that I'll say is when you're capturing information and then you're going to process a literature note into a permanent note, you want to be very, you want to constrain yourself to creating permanent notes to what's most relevant to you because you're going to watch a Go programming language, and there's been several mentions of computer science terms that I don't know, that I'm like, oh, I should make a permanent note on that so I understand, but that's not relevant to me right now. Right now, what I need to know is enough of the programming language to write some articles for work, and so that's all that I'm focused on. Um, but the good news is, is that those terms that I don't understand are captured in this literature note, and I'll know enough in my mind, I'll remember enough just in my, my own memory, that it was in this course that I heard that term and I can search and I can kind of find the time that that was mentioned by these headings that I have here that correlate to the modules. So it's just a kind of a finding a way back to particular knowledge points. Um, I suppose that's all I have to say on, on literature notes. Uh, one thing that I will leave you with is you don't have to make them pretty. You know, it's useful. There's some usefulness in the metadata, but don't get you know, I wouldn't start with that. I would start with like what's important. What's important is capturing the ideas that you're interested in enough to spend 30 minutes or so writing a permanent note. That's what matters most. So in the very beginning, focus on that. The metadata can come later if, if ever, if it's useful. Um, but with that, thank you for watching. I hope that you found this was uh, useful to you. And if you have any questions, please um, leave them in the comments. Thank you.